Hey everyone and welcome back to a new video. We've had a bit of time to reflect on the latest reveals from Warhammer Day 2023 which included some really impressive stuff for Age of Sigmar. I know people often make it about who won the presentation but I do feel Age of Sigmar has a real stride right now and it's great to see how much momentum is behind that game in particular. So in this video I wanted to briefly talk about the Age of Sigmar reveals we saw, what I really liked about them and some of the features that caught my attention. Also I'll talk about the new Liberal design that we saw recently which seems to have been announced in a rather quiet way. If all of that interests you then let's jump right in. Now we already know the roadmap for the Dawnbringer series and we're set to see the final book, book 4, sometime this winter and to be blunt I'm really relieved we're able to stick to that timeline because we have seen delays in other corners of Warhammer recently. But at the same time I still get the sense there may actually be a book 5 if only because the first three have focused more on order and destruction factions and the presenters said that death and chaos will get their moments in the spotlight too. That seems a lot to pack into one final book and as we saw with Ark of Omens fifth book, GW is not against a last minute surprise now and then. But in any case we're about to get book 3 which is called The Long Hunt and that will see the Axian Crusade press on into the Great Parch where they'll battle the Gore Tide of Corn, and the Crusade in Giran will simultaneously battle with hordes of Ogre Gorges. But in the book itself we'll get rules for the new models which we'll speak about in a moment and their regiments of renown and we'll also see regiments for the newer Warcry Warbands that are making their way over to Age of Sigmar 2. Personally I know some people are annoyed that new models for 40k and AOS seem to come to Kill Team and Warcry first but I do feel it's quite a good way to do it overall. It helps to entice people into those smaller format games and it means Games Workshop can update specific units without having to fit them into wider faction updates or campaigns. Plus if you like the models you can just buy the kit separately later on so no harm done in my mind. Personally though I'm really intrigued by the idea of an army made up entirely of Ogre Butchers and Gorgers. They've got a brand new regiment of renown called the Roving Moor which allows you to turn the battlefield into a ravenous moor pit that feeds on enemy units that get too close. That sounds like a lot of fun to me and as an old Ogre Kingdoms player I definitely can't wait to go through those rules when they come out. There's also a regiment of renown for fire slayers which builds on combinations of the new Vulcan flame seekers and magma droths and a cool rule where you can hitch a ride on the latter to get your stunty units across the battlefield quicker. And of course we have the two flagship regiments but before I go into those I want to say that I think we'll start to see the story of the Dawnbringers campaign take a bit of a turn after this book. Again as it stands the next book is the official climax and that will effectively set an end to the narrative of Age of Sigmar's third edition ahead of the release of fourth edition in this summer. But even if we do get a book five we may well soon see the promised failure of one of those crusades and my money is on that being Giran simply because most of the new order heroes seem to be a part of the Axie one right now. In any case let's take a look at the first of the two models revealed, Lord Relictor Ionus Cryptborn. As they pointed out in the presentation Ionus first appeared in the introductory set of Age of Sigmar back in 2015 and hasn't really been heard of since. However he's now back with a brand new model and carried on the wings of a new dragon, Cthorak, as he seeks a cure to the flawed reforging process that is seeing the Stormcast slowly lose their minds and memories. Straight off the bat I love the chunky chaplain vibe, there's few things more intimidating than someone with a skull mask holding holding a mace several times bigger than their head and waving it in the direction of yours. But seriously there is a great sense of weight to Ionis's part of the model which I think it needs because given the Stormcast have got a little leaner with some of the new Thunderstrike armour it helps him to stand out even amongst his kin. You've also got this great throne like saddle behind him which again evokes this great sense of command and authority but it's the gothic skulls all over this model that really convey what this character is all about. As a Lord Relictor, Sigmar's first in fact, he sits on the edge of death ensuring that the souls of fallen Stormcast return to Sigmar's realm for reforging and that role is instantly evoked when you look at this model. Turning to Cthorak, at a glance he's very similar to the other Drachnith that we have seen in the Stormcast range, particularly with the Stormdrake Guard that make up his regiment of renown. But if we look closer we can see how his wings are scarred and the scales across his body have been chipped. This is a character who has gone through a lot and listening to the Warhammer Day presentation we know that in fact he's one of the newer Drachnith. The clue for what has happened is shown in this subtle discolouring of the beard. Cthorak looks much older than he should and it's because he spent time in the realm of death and prematurely aged. 
staged. And that scarring of time and the reminders of mortality really complement the motifs that Ionis himself brings to the model. The result is a great representation of life on the edge of death and that again echoes what we know of both characters and their backgrounds. As a side note, just as Ionis is trying to find a cure for the reforging process, Cathoric is actually looking for his race's lost afterlife and I think that might be quietly opening up new units in the future of Age of Sigmar, a cured version of the Stormcast and maybe future Drake models, reborn or maybe even reforged for the factions of order. We'll have to wait and see but it's exciting to be sure. But let's turn to the other model that was shown off at the event, Belthanos, first Thorn of Kurnoth. Like with Ionus, the team gave us a bit of a glimpse into Belthanos' character. He's the leader of the wild hunt in Giran and ultimately serves as an avatar of Kurnoth, the god of the hunt in Age of Sigmar. To that effect, Belthanos sits somewhat in the same space as Orion did in Warhammer Fantasy, but given it's believed that Kurnoth is gone from AOS's setting, he's keeping the belief alive through his own actions. Looking to the model itself, we see that tradition straight away with the familiar Horn of Kurnoth, which once again evokes a clear sense of command and authority with the model. Belthanos also, like Orion, bears a spear. I'm not sure if this is a similar reimagining of Orion's, we didn't learn that from the preview, but I'm sure we'll find out soon. However, collectively, these armaments create a clear sense of familiarity with Orion, and one that I think is a very deliberate choice by the designers. Speaking to the aspects of this specific model though, I love its intricacy, the leafy cloak, the tendrils of wood branching out and this awesome braided hair. It's beautiful to look at but it also points to that notion of fragility and I don't mean of the plastic itself but of the balance of life in Age of Sigmar and why warriors like Belthanos strive so hard to protect it. It's a bit of a meta observation I know but everything about this model is carefully balanced, fragile and beautiful and whether intentional or not, it immediately conveys the essence of the Sylvan in my mind and that's wonderful to see. We also see Belthanos's beating heart at the core of his model, which seems a bit odd to expose when you think about it, but it also conveys a sense of confidence in the model. We'll see if that sticks, but I'm sure you don't get to leading the wild hunt without having an assured sense of your own abilities. Looking to the mount, the Carnelian Great Spy, I think it's a really nice addition to the creatures we already see across the Sylvaneth range. It's not immediately clear in the photos, but Belthanos himself is a big model, and so his mount probably sits a little smaller than Alariel's, making the whole piece quite a monster. But other than the obvious, it being a fantastically detailed and simply beautiful model to look at, I do like the subtle element of Belthanos's feet branching across the Great Spy's horns. It gives an impression of symbiosis, again another theme of the Sylvaneth and a sense that this isn't simply a rider and their mount, but more of a singular being. Overall, it's fantastic. So those are the two incredible models we saw from the reveal, but there's one final thing I want to reflect on and it's not from the presentation itself. We have the new Realms of Ruin game coming out in November and ahead of that, the Warhammer community site recently revealed that for that game, Frontier Developments have included a new version of the Liberators with Thunderstrike armor. They showed off this new look on the community website and pointed out that in the game, you can swap between the new and older Liberator look. However, crucially, it seems to be confirming that Games Workshop has been working on a new Liberator Liberator design which could well be coming to the tabletop soon. Personally I really like the new design but then I'm also a fan of the older Liberator look so we'll have to wait and see a bit more of them before I can decide if I'll replace my current Liberator models. That said an update certainly isn't unexpected given the current Liberators came out in 2015 but at the end of the day this feels like a rather understated announcement. I'm sure we'll get a proper one in the coming weeks and months though. So to wrap up, those are just a few of my thoughts about the recent Age of Sigmar reveals and what particularly got my attention. As I said at the start, I think Age of Sigmar really has some momentum behind it right now and the New Realms of Ruin game is hopefully set to push that further. But what did you make of the reveals and what I've spoken about in this video? Are you continuing to enjoy the Dawnbringers campaign and what do you think will come in future books? Let me know your thoughts in the comments section. And as always, a big thank you for joining me today. If you liked the video, please do click the like button and subscribe to the channel if you'd like to join me for future Warhammer content and I hope to see you for my next video. Until then, however, take care.